Hi, welcome for FMJ discussion. Which of the following is used to test the efficiency of the sterilization in an autoclave? Okay. So, autoclave, the quality control agent for autoclave is geobasilus stereothermophilus. The spores of geobasilus stereothermophilus used as a quality control agent for autoclave. Okay. Bacillus pumilus. Bacillus pumilus. Mainly for, we are using it for radiation. Radiation. Okay. Non-toxigenic spores of Clostridium tetani. It may be useful in hotter one. But hotter one, what commonly we are using? We are using bacillus atrophius. Bacillus atrophius. Bacillus atrophius. We are using quality control agent for hotter oven mainly. But we can use non toxigenic spores of Clostridium tetani also. Next is 64 year old diabetic man is brought to the hospital with complaints of intense pain in his left ear. The ear is edematous with erythema and purulent discharge present. CT scan reveals soft tissue swelling and destruction of the underlying temporal bone. Growth of the organism shown in this ideal selective medium. What is the ideal selective medium for this pathogen? See carefully here. This clinical picture suggestive of Malignant otitis externa. It is suggestive of malignant otitis externa, which is caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa. which is caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa, malignant otitis externa, which is caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And see here also, it produces green pigment, green pigment, pyocyanin, suggestive of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Now the question is, what is the selective medium for Pseudomonas aeruginosa? The selective medium for Pseudomonas aeruginosa is cetrimide agar. Filled is agar for haemophilus influency. Manitol salt agar for Staphylococcus aureus. And Pike's medium, it's a transport medium. For Staphylococcus. It is a transport medium for Staphylococcus. Manitol salt agar is the selective medium and Fildes agar is a selective medium for different bacteria. Pseudomonas, the selective medium is cetrimide agar and remember cetrimide is a antiseptic. What it will do? It inhibit other bacteria. Pseudomonas happily grows in the presence of cetrimide. Next is A 26 year old female, com female commercial sex worker presents with fever and abdominal tenderness at day 2 of her menstrual cycle. Gram negative diplococci are seen in a gram strain of vaginal secretions. See, gram negative diplococci seen in vaginal secretions. And the bacteria is facultative intracellular inside the polymorphonucleal cells, inside the pus cells. Which of the following is likely the most important virulent factor necessary for this organism to initiate infection? Female commercial sex worker, vaginal discharge and gram-negative diplococci, intracellular, all suggestive of Neisseria gonorrhoeae. or gonococci. It's a case of gonococcal infection. What is the important virulent factor of gonococci? Is gonococci is pili. 
Gonoka ki possess endotoxin made up of lipo oligosaccharide. It also possess IgA1 protease, no capsule. But the major virulent factor is pili. Okay. Next is it causes endoservicitis, arthritis, pelvic inflammatory disease, rash, many things. Will flix reaction is useful in diagnosis. Will flix reaction is nothing but a heterophil antigen antibody test for rickettsia. Heterophil antigen antibody test diagnosis of rickettsia. It is helpful in diagnosis of scrub typhus. It is not useful in others. Others Q or T not useful. In Q fever, rickettsial pox, trench fever. Okay, sir. It is useful in epidemic typhus. Endemic typhus, scrub typhus, rocky mountain spotted fever, and Indian tick typhus. Indian tick typhus, rocky mountain spotted fever, Indian tick typhus. These five conditions, it's very useful. These three conditions it is not useful. So, will flix test is useful for diagnosis of scrub typhus, not others. Next is a 32 year male was clinically diagnosed as case of tra traveler's diarrhea. His stool examination reveals pear shaped structure, pear shaped structure with falling leaf motility. Falling leaf motility. What is your interpretation? See, pear shape, falling leaf motility, leaf shape, falling leaf motility. It is nothing but giardia. Giardia lamblia or giardia intestinalis. It causes stetoria. It causes stetoria. And also fatty stool, travelers diarrhea. And megaloblastic anemia. Megaloblastic anemia. These are all caused by giardia because it interferes with absorption of fat and vitamins. So the fat is not absorbed. Vitamin is not absorbed. Okay, so it leads to steatoria as well as vitamin deficiency. So it is giardia lamblia or giardia intestinalis. Giardia lamblia or giardia intestinalis. Okay, next is because Escherichia coli is bacteria. Entamoeba is amoeba. Trichomonas causes sexually transmitted infection. That also it's not a intestinal is not a pathogen usually. Trichomonas vaginalis is pathogen. Next is macrophage in back brain named as. So macrophage different structures they have different names. For example, kupfer cells in liver, microglial cells in brain, Langerhan cells in skin, mesangial seen in kidney. Same way, littoral in spleen, half buyer seen in placenta. Like that, they have different structures, different tissues, they have different names, macrophage. So, here it is brain, so microglial cells. The macrophage in brain is named as microglial cells identify the structure which present in all nucleated structures all nucleated cells see there is one attachment 
and one unit holding the antigen antigen binding group made up of single unit alpha 1 and alpha 2 this is called mhc1 mhc1 present in all nucleated cells same thing suppose if it is like this this mhc2 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 will hold antigen here the unit is two units alpha 1 beta 1 two attachments so mhc1 one attachment with membrane and it also possesses beta 2 microglobulin beta 2 microglobulin that is exclusively seen in mhc1 mhc1 beta 2 microglobulin so this is mhc1 which present to the antigen to the t cell receptor of cd8 it present the antigen to the T cell receptor of CD8. A 28 year old female who had completed two weeks ciprofloxacin in course for his enteric fever now developed valvular pruritus and white cottage cheese vaginal discharge. So, wherever you can get curdy white or cottage cheese like vaginal discharge, think of fungal, fungal etiology. The gram stain and the exudate shown in the image. Yes, beautiful pseudo hyphae. So, vaginal discharge, there are three etiologies. One is bacteria, you can get clue cells, where in uh, protozoa, you can get jerky motility, wobbling motility, trichomonas. And third one is pseudo hyphae. Pseudo hyphae. It is nothing but candida albicans. Canda albicans produces pseudo hyphae. Normal hyphae like this. Pseudo hyphae like this. You can get constrictions. You can get constrictions in between the cells. That is called pseudo hyphae. Next is 28 year old male, occupational by farmer, presents with serious pruritic, warty, cauliflower like lesions which extend from the foot to knee, microscopy of the biopsied lesion reveal the presence of characteristic pigmented yeast cell shown in the picture. Choose the appropriate clinical syndrome. What is it? It is cauliflower wart like lesions and a typical, what is it called? Copper penny bodies. Or sclerotic bodies. or muriform bodies or medullar bodies copper penny sclerotic muriform or medullar bodies copper penny sclerotic muriform medullar bodies diagnostic of chromoblastomycosis diagnostic of chromoblastomycosis in case of sporotrichosis, you can get asteroid bodies. Zygomycosis, aseptate hyphae. Like that. Next is infective stage of schistosoma hematobium. It's a direct question. Schistosoma, any schistosoma, infective stage is cercary. Especially how the cercary look like. The cercaria like this is like this. It is having four cretile cercaria. Four cretile cercaria. Meta cercaria for other trematodes. Pleuro cercaria for diphyllobotrium latum infective stage. Pro cercaria. It's a first stage of diphyllobotrium latum, but infective stage is pleurocircoid larva. Infective stage is pleurocircoid larva. Next is virus demonstrated from a case of epidemic keratoconjunctivitis shown in the picture. What are the serotypes responsible for this condition? This virus is typically look like satellite. 
or spaceship appearance. So it is nothing but adenovirus. It is adenovirus. Adenovirus causes epidemic keratoconjunctivitis. What is the serotype? 8, 19, 37, those kind of people. 3 and 7 causes pharyngoconjunctival fever. Forty forty one causes infantal diarrhea. Eleven twenty one causes hemorrhagic cystitis. Eleven twenty one causes hemorrhagic cystitis. Okay, the causative agent of fifth disease. Fifth disease is nothing but. Erythema infectiosum. Fifth disease is erythema infectiosum. It is caused by parvovirus B19. Poliovirus 3 is not there because now it is totally eradicated. 2019, they eradicated poliovirus 3 also. Adenovirus 40, 41 causes infantile diarrhea. Yellow fever virus disease not seen in India. So, fifth disease is erythema infectiosum. Sixth disease, sometimes they may ask, caused by human herpes virus 6 and 7. We call it as roseola infantum. Or exanthem subitum. Roseola infantum or exanthem subitum. An important feature of parvovirus B19, erythema infectiosum, slapped cheek rash in children. It produces slapped cheek rash in children. That is a very peculiar slapped cheek rash. And next is a 75 year old patient develops diarrhea for 5 days after starting antibiotic treatment. For a serious staphylococcal infection, for example, they start clindamycin, those kind of drugs. What is the most likely causative agent? This clinical condition is called antibiotic associated pseudomembranous. Enterocolitis. Usually, it is otherwise called healthcare associated diarrhea. We call this as healthcare associated diarrhea. Antibiotic associated pseudomembranous enterocolitis or healthcare associated diarrhea. Commonly caused by Clostridium difficile. Clostridiitis difficile new name, but Clostridium difficile. Clostridium puffingens, it causes gas gangrene. Pseudomonas aeruginosa causes many things. Swimmers here, hot tub folliculitis, many things. Sigella sony causes basilary dysentery. It causes basilary dysentery. Next is, segmented RNA genome is present in which one of the following viruses? Segmented RNA present in following viruses. This mnemonic is called ARBO. RNA viridae, Rio viridae, Bunya viridae, Orthomyxo viridae. RNA 2 segments, Bunya 3 segments, orthomixo 8 segments, rio 10 segments, 10 to 11 segments. Areno, rio, bunya, orthomixo, viridae. So carefully watch here. Segmented RNA genome seen in 
which one it is seen in influenza virus ortho virus eight segments it's seen in influenza virus nothing but ortho rabies herpes molluscum they are not having segmented rna next is nigri bodies are the inclusion body associated with which of the following viral infection many viral infection having intranuclear and intracytoplasmic infection uh, nu inclusion bodies variolas having intracytoplasmic Passion bodies. Herpes is having intranuclear. We call it as Lipschulz bodies. We call this as Lipschulz bodies. Rabies intracytoplasmic. We have Negri bodies where foul pox intracytoplasmic bollinger bodies so rabies virus infection you can get nigri bodies intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies nigri bodies is diagnostic of rabies but seen in 80 percent of the rabies cases it is absent in 20 percent but it's very good one next is a 15 year old boy taken to his pediatrician after experiencing fever, malaise and anorexia followed by tender swelling of his parotid glands, parotitis. Which of the following is most likely complication to occur? Is adult male or adolescent male, parotitis. It is a case of mumps. It is a case of mumps. In mumps, what is the most likely complication? In men, is orchitis epididymo orchitis gbs usually commonly seen with campylobacter jejuni infection myocarditis associated with coxsackie b virus or cornibacterium diphtheria cornibacterium diphtheria so it is a case of parotitis it's a case of mumps caused by mumps virus and the complication is epididymo orchitis complication is epididymo orchitis next is that's all with this we complete our microbiology discussion thank you